Hello friends. Many people wonder, can the dead talk to us? After all, there are many stories of people claiming to have spoken with their loved ones who are supposedly now in heaven. They claim these dear ones are watching over them and giving them helpful guidance. But is this really the case? Can our dead speak to us? This is the question we will be addressing as we continue our journey through the book, The Great Controversy. We read that the doctrine of man's consciousness in death, especially the belief that spirits of the dead return to minister to the living, has prepared the way for modern spiritualism. The author then asks, if the dead are admitted to the presence of God and holy angels, and privileged with knowledge far exceeding what they had before possessed, why should they not return to earth to enlighten and instruct the living? Why should they not be permitted to communicate with them, to warn them against evil, or to comfort them in sorrow? These are important questions and seem to make sense. After all, if our loved ones are in heaven, why wouldn't they be able to communicate with us? These questions lead us back to a related topic that we addressed in an earlier video regarding what happens when a person dies. As we saw, the Bible describing death as a sleep, a completely unconscious state in which the person remains until the resurrection. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5 assures us that the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And later in that same chapter we read, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. If you would like to review what the Bible says on this important topic, I encourage you to visit the URL at the bottom of the screen. So. If these spirits bring who claim to be dead, loved ones, are not who they claim to be, then who are they? And why are they so dangerous? From Scripture, we understand that these beings are actually seducing spirits who teach doctrines of devils. Ellen White writes, Here is a channel regarded as sacred through which Satan works for the accomplishment of his purposes. The fallen angels who do his bidding appear as messengers from the spirit world. While professing to bring the living into communication with the dead, the prince of evil exercises his bewitching influence upon their minds. It is through these evil spirits who have the power to perfectly counterfeit a dead loved one in looks, word, and tone that Satan promotes some of his most wicked teachings, and he does it in a very deceptive way. He often causes to appear the likeness of those who died without having given their life to Jesus, claiming they are happy in heaven, thus promoting the error that it doesn't matter how one lives their life, at the end of the day, we all end up in heaven anyway. In the Great Controversy, we read that these pretended visitants from the world of spirits sometimes utter cautions and warnings which prove to be correct. Then, as confidence is gained, they present doctrines that directly undermine faith in the scriptures. The inspired author continues, the fact that they state some truths and are able at times to foretell future events gives to their statements an appearance of reliability, and their false teachings are accepted, as if they were the most sacred truths of the Bible. My friends, this is spiritualism. And it is very dangerous. Those who participate in it are giving the devil a direct path into their hearts and their minds, turning them away from the truths of Scripture. The Bible clearly warns us to test the spirits 
whether they are of God, and to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. While speaking with the spirits of the dead is clearly a form of spiritualism, there are also more subtle forms in which Satan works to deceive. We read that the prince of darkness, who has so long bent the powers of his mastermind to the work of deception, skillfully adapts his temptations to men of all classes and conditions. To persons of culture and refinement, he presents spiritualism in its more refined and intellectual aspects, and thus succeeds in drawing many into his snare. Some of these more refined and intellectual aspects include appeals to reason by the presentation of elevating themes and enlisting the affections by his eloquent portrayals of love and charity. Satan appeals to pride, tempting people to exalt themselves and conclude they have no need for God. Spiritualism teaches that man is the creature of progression, that it is his destiny from his birth to progress, even to eternity toward the Godhead. Satan leads people to believe power is within you, encouraging everyone to look to themselves as the only rule of judgment or standard of character, rather than looking to the righteousness and perfection of the infinite God, the only true object of worship. Ellen White clearly explains what happens when Satan's deceptions are followed. When the people are thus led to believe that desire is the highest law, that liberty is license, and that man is accountable only to himself, who can wonder that corruption and depravity teem on every hand? Multitudes eagerly accept teachings that leave them at liberty to obey the promptings of the carnal heart. The reins of self-control are laid upon the neck of lust. The powers of mind and soul are made subject to the animal propensities, and Satan exultingly sweeps into his net thousands who profess to be followers of Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are living in serious times, and Scripture warns us that just before Jesus comes, there will be the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. However, Satan can never force anyone to yield to his temptations. We are told that those who are earnestly seeking a knowledge of the truth and are striving to purify their souls through obedience, thus doing what they can to prepare for the conflict, will find in the God of truth a sure defense. She continues, he would sooner send every angel out of heaven to protect his people than leave one soul that trusts in him to be overcome by Satan. This is where our safety is, friends, listening to God and following his word. We do not need to be deceived by Satan, for God is much stronger. As we lean on him, he will show us the way. I invite you to pray with us just now. Father in heaven, guide now as we commit our lives into your hands, recognizing that the word of God is clear and it is powerful. Help us not to be deceived by any evil spirits or by Satan himself. Help us to understand fully that the Bible gives us instruction. Those who have died uh, know nothing but those who are living have an opportunity of following you. So Lord, as living individuals, we humbly submit ourselves to you, asking that you will carry us through to the end of time 
as we lean completely upon you and your holy word. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.